to this episode of Sailing Nikau. We are in Barbuda. This place is beautiful, known for its pink sand beaches. Unfortunately, it's been devastated by the hurricane, but it's still amazing. We're going to show you around this place. But first, we want to take you back to Antigua, where a couple of days ago, we got a haul out and show you what that was like, what life was like at the yard. About six o'clock in the morning, and we're off to get a haul out. Uh, Travelator's gonna lift Nico out, out of the water, and we're getting a, the bottom painted, getting a through, few through holes refitted, and uh, getting a thousand hour service on the moto. Ever seen the light, making my way to you, and it's been all right. You might be waiting on a sign. With everything in motion, I've come alive. So uh, we're um, just getting Ivan here to place the uh, seal and you're adjusting, what are you adjusting again? The valves. The valves. And you're going to check the injectors. And the seal basically is just this thing here, this little piece of rubber that runs all around there and it stops the oil getting fr in from this side to that side. And ours does look like it needs replacing. We'll be paying uh, 70 US dollars for that little piece of rubber though, plus shipping. So it's not cheap servicing the engines, but pretty important. Part here was new a year ago, but if you can see all this build up of carbon on the inside, that's because Josh has been running the motor too slow. slow. At low revs, low RPM to save petrol, but actually it's bad to do that for this reason. Josh is hard at work. I just done a little bit of polishing, I can't do much. I've put an acid on our uh, keel because there was some rust and so before I apply the metal undercoat um, to that you've got to do a nice acid wash to kind of really clean that down and kill the acid and then we'll put a metal primer on and then about a couple of layers of Primacon which is another type of primer and then about four layers of um, anti foul so it needs a lot on and because as you can see that it, it's pretty gnarly life at the yard is um, a, a bit of a weird thing like the girls have to go for a shower now and how, how far do you guys have to walk to the shower it's too far to walk from here to the marina just to take a shower so we're just gonna dingy marina showers actually quite nice no, well, I'm just showing them the facilities, but there's no hot water apparently. Okay, yeah. Bella, how was it? Pretty good. Great to have a shower. It yep. becomes an amazing luxury, doesn't it? It does. When you live on a boat. It really does. They were disgusting. I had an old lady's old hogs or underwear right next to my shower. <laughs> no, you didn't. And it Did looked you? it looked like urine and a mix of poo on the floor. But other than that, it was lovely. <laughs> Oh me, they were clean and nice. No, they weren't. Well, mine was. So mine, was. mine was gross. I picked the biggest one, but it was a mistake. Looks like there's going to be a party here tonight. 
Yeah, should be nice fun. So what do we think of Jolly Harbour Marina and Yard? This marina is really nice. It's got so many great facilities you can use, like the showers and there's lots of cool shops. Really great supermarket with fresh milk, if you can believe that. I haven't seen that since Spain. And really nice restaurants. Yeah, they're beautiful little restaurants. Really good food too. And the yard's pretty clean for a yard. Yeah, and they've yep. got average internet, which is pretty cool. Plus, I think the locals are really nice here. Oh, they are. Yeah. They're nicer than any other Caribbean locals we've met. Oh, that's a big call. It is a big Dominica call. was really nice too. No, these people were nicer. Oh, yep. okay. We, we think all the Caribbean is nice, but Antiguans are especially nice. After four o'clock, all the workers leave from the yard. It's only the liverboards left. Three little boys here having a game of marbles. It's milk, milk clock. Time to change your shoes and socks. Shocks, shocks, shoes and socks. You only have the one sock. How's it going, Josh? Pretty. Oh, I think we've had a bit of a crappy day, actually. Yeah, I reckon. A bit of a crappy day. We've had some problems with people not doing what they said they were going to do, products not being available, products not working, just stuff goes wrong. Being in the yard is not fun, but and things it's so hot here, like getting look, there. Look how quickly this, look at the paintbrush, look how quickly it goes all gunky. Let me see the paintbrush. It's difficult. Gunky. No good. We're back in the water after our haul out in Jolly Harbour and I've got to say it was a good experience overall. The yard is really clean, it's really professional, it's well run, they're very onto it but they're also very much sticklers for the rules. Like I got in a bit of trouble because I got mixed up with the time, I thought it was 10.30, it was 9.30 for putting it back in and they, they were really like kind of antsy about it. They're definitely not relaxed, they're very professional, but they're also very friendly. Um, they're very friendly on the surface, but I've got to say that when they don't want to help you, they're certainly not going to help you. We encountered that a few times and it was a weird kind of undertone. Um, but all in all, it was a good experience. It cost us about 800 US for the haul in and out, including the pressure wash and staying at the yard, which isn't too bad because I did a lot of comparisons around the Caribbean and that's about standard, unless you go all the way to Grenada where it's a bit cheaper. And then there was the um, sanding part. I think that was a bit overpriced. Um, they charged us 500 US just for sanding, including the keel grind. That was a bit too much, I think. Um, and we got some mechanical stuff done. They did an awesome job very professional but once again really expensive on the labour 80 US an hour and so that just totally added up but we needed that stuff done so now Nikau is in tip top condition ready to head to the Pacific and behind me here you might see that we have a map these maps come with the Doyle's guides and the kids have got really interested in tracking where, we, where we've been and where we're going so we've been to Dominica been to Guadeloupe all around Guadeloupe come up to Antigua, there's Jolly Harbour, that's where we hauled out. Now we're up here in Barbuda exploring that. We've got to go back to Jolly Harbour to pick up some parts that didn't arrive in time, just some air filters for our generator, and then we can check out there and not sure where we're going to go next. We're still debating whether we go north or south, but we've got to get to Panama in about a month's time. But tell me, lover, what you think I said. Tell me, lover, what you think I meant. Cause I need some closure. 
There are any big suckers in there? Don't you just love fish though? What do you got there, honey? This is a Lucy Light, one of our best new purchases. They solar charge during the day and then they've got LED lights, all different, about 10 different colours. They give really good light and then they just blow up so they can pack awesome, down uh, almost. Beach barbecues, eh? They pack down almost flat so they take up no room. They're really light. They're awesome for the boat and beach barbecues. Go solar. Very cool. Just doing a quick lock up. What are we doing, honey? We're going to go and see the frigate birds, which are famous here. It's the largest sanctuary in the world outside of the Galapagos Islands. And Barbuda is, um, you have to go with a guide. So we're going to go with George Jeffries, who is highly recommended from everyone. This is guy. Yeah. Oh. It's good to be highly recommended, hey? This, this, yeah. this is all guy. <laughs> Like it when we talk, so tell me everything you want to be Baby, is it fool's gold, something like a distant diamond ring I don't care what we... Swimming dog Little puppy Hey dudes I got a summertime feeling in my chest right next to the lipstick marks you left Tracing my fingers across your skin singing can this last forever So we're about two three miles away from the hotel and this container flew in the hurricane It literally got picked up blowing in the wind a 40 foot container all the way into these mangroves Crazy. That's scary thought. Awesome day checking out the sanctuary and we got these crayfish New Zealand standard these would not even be legal they're really small but they're delicious and and it's just what they do here and it was really cool to help out these local fishermen who are really still suffering as you can see with this hurricane and we've got beautiful little crayfish look at these tiny little suckers this is a breeding ground for crayfish in here and they go all the way, right down all of the uh, Caribbean. Mm. It's a nursery in this lagoon. It's a crayfish nursery. They call it lobster here. Technically, it's not lobster because it doesn't have big nippers. No, I, no, I don't know. That's just how we, what we... That's what they call it. Most of the world calls Ooh, it lobster. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. But this is our favourite dinner on Nikau. A lot of people, when they cook crayfish, you can't actually get the best part, which is... In fact, the crayfish legs, there's quite a knack to it. Because when they cook them on the barbecue, it, they often overcook them. Why can't you get them at the restaurant? Because they Just they don't boil them first, actually. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they're not actually cooked in the legs on the barbecue. But Next the time you get a crayfish, you can also put uh, your beer in here. I think it's that they just overcook them. It's Monday, school day here on Nikau, and uh, I just thought, oh, there's this cool little reef right behind the boat, and I just wanted to check it out. I know it's had a lot of hurricane damage here. If you really want some more crayfish, they were delicious last night, by the way. Uh, there wasn't, there was just tiny crayfish out there, but a beautiful little shark, nice spotted rays, great fish, and it's so cool to see the coral coming away again. I'll roll that footage for you, check it out.
your own neck out. And uh, definitely need a cup of tea after that. It's pretty cold. What? What? You look like you're having a bit of a spell on there, mate. Knees. Half knees. Half shiver. What's a half sneeze, half shiver called? A shniver. A shniver. Hey, uh, how's that? What? What an awesome school, right? Get to go snorkeling. Actually, we still have to do school. Yeah. So how how many hours of school do you do? Three. Three hours of school. It's too and much. and how is the, how is the snorkel, guys? Cold. Uh, cold. It was very cold. I had a huge, but it was cold. We saw a lot of things. So. No food. No big fish yet, eh? I like saw a still a huge, like meter wide. No, more than that. Stingray came right at me. I've got some video footage of it, and it was definitely not a meter wide. It was big underwater, right? Still all small fish in the Caribbean, nothing that these guys can shoot. <laughs> I found a the, shark. Yeah. Um, How did you under, find that shark under, under the cave. rock? I was looking for crayfish and I found a shark. Yeah. It was pretty freaky. Oh, did you see that? Just slivered under the rock there. Yeah. Did you see its head? Because yeah, when I went down. Eye. It was like twitching right at me. So. That's a twitchy eyed it shark. Was, it was scary. Oh, my eyes mm. Oh, no, no, can you get your undies off the ground? Get those undies off the ground, girl. Those ones right there. What do you reckon? Um, safety wise, Jazz, oh, don't yeah. headbutt the camera. Safety wise, like the yeah. reef was maybe 200 meters away, downwind. Josh was worried. Oh, he thought got we should take the big boat. goggle mark. I know. I always get goggle marks after snorkeling. Yeah, I wanted to take the bigger boat. I hate doing that. Do you want to tell people why? <laughs> well, if something happened to our outboard, we literally would be trying to row into some pretty strong winds. We, we would die. We probably wouldn't be able to get back. We but wouldn't we, die. So, we, what do we do? We carry a portable VHF radio. And we would VHF. turn it on to 16 and we would radio for the Coast Guard or anyone nearby to come and help us. We could if, always if whack we out our get anyone anchor, on that right? We could put on the anchor and wait. And we could try rowing into the wind. It was only a couple hundred metres. It would have been hard, but we might have got there. I think I could have swum there with my fins, actually. Probably. Probably could have done that. Mm. Still not ideal. It was beautiful. I'm glad we did it. It's a great way to start the day. It's cool that we have the flexibility to go snorkeling before school and now we're having a hot chocolate and it's a lovely little life here on the boat really. I'm busy in my own life, follow my own destiny, my eyes forget all the time.